hi everyone you're welcome back to this youtube channel today we'll be learning how to make this simple kimono top and this um, top does not have buttons but we're going to be using a type of closure that i will show us later um in the course of the tutorial so let's get started now to make this simple top um i'm using pattern paper for clarity of the illustration okay so i've already drawn my lines and I'm using this for the front and back. So this is my shoulder line, okay? And shoulder to my um, chest line, that's nine inches. If you're a plus size, you can do up to 9.5 or 10. Then I have shoulder to the waistline, okay? Shoulder to the hip line, which is usually 24 inches, and then shoulder to the hemline. So I wanted mine to be kind of short, okay? So on the shoulder line, I'll mark half of my across back, or shoulder measurement okay afterwards I'll be marking the length of my sleeve now um, this actually depends on your preference okay so um, from my shoulder marking there I'll be marking 12 inches as the length of my sleeve because we're going to be cutting this together now the, to the total length will give me 19 I'll mark the same thing on my chest line like so okay then um, if you like you could come down from the chest line a bit but as a guideline i'll be marking quarter of my bust on the chest line that marking is just as a guideline then on the waist hip and the hemline i would mark quarter of my hip okay and then if you want this to be slightly free you could add about half inch for ease the ease is not the same allowance, please. It's just for ease, okay? Or if you want it to be slightly fitted, you can just probably mark your bust circumference on the waist. But definitely, you're not using your waist circumference, okay? So, but for me, I just marked quarter of my hip on the waist, hip, and the hemlines, okay? Now, with my long ruler, I'll connect all three points together like that. Then, I'll be linking the chest line to um, the waistline from the sleeve opening okay and then to create a sleeve opening i'll just connect my shoulder to the chest line which i'll be showing us in a moment okay you could um, actually come down from the chest and like i said it depends on your almost circumference measurements okay so i'm just connecting that together and then i'm going to just curve in slightly Curving slightly into the um, waistline. So like I said, I'll come down slightly by half an inch or one inch. Then I'll just curve like this. Like I said initially, the marking of my bust measurement is the guide. Okay. So this curve shouldn't go beyond um, the marking of the bust circumference. Okay. Else it's a bit tight for you. So it's just a guideline. So you can see where I'm like, linking it to my waistline. This is how you're going to do it. It's as simple as this the dress is that less or should i call it top is that less okay now we're going to be creating the neckline and since we're using the same pattern for front and back i'll be marking both necklines on this pattern now for the back okay ideally um the back neckline support the next neck width is supposed to be three inches okay but because of the color i will make it um four inch we're going to add any color to it yeah then the neck depth i'll be making it um as against the normal one inch okay so i'll just um increase it slightly to about 1.5 inch with my pattern master i'll be creating the back neckline Okay, so you should learn how to work with um, pattern drafting tools. This is my back neckline. Now for the front, okay, um, the depth actually depends on your preference, okay, but I didn't want mine to reveal my cleavage, so I'll just be doing 8.5 inch. You can see the way I slanted my tape rule. Okay, so I'll just mark that point and then I will draw a slanted line. So this second neckline is going to be my front okay so um back front now i'll be cutting out this the part of the pattern that we need okay okay so let me just do that now 
but like i said you can add ease to your measurements okay yeah now um, this is my pattern already cut out okay and we want to start with the back so you can see that i added half inch ease that is not my seam allowance space i'll be adding seam allowance when i'm cutting on my fabric i added ease okay so we're starting with the back now i'm going to cut out the back neckline okay and then i will place my fabric on fold to cut out the back now um, my fabric is already folded into two the back pattern is cut on fold please so you place your um, pattern on the fabric like this and cut out um, the back which i've already done so side seam allowance is one inch okay um the hem allowance is one inch now to cut the front i have to cut out the unwanted parts um on the neckline okay so um before you do that just blend up that v part slightly like a gentle curve so it's not exactly a sharp v per se okay now i'll cut out the unwanted part like i said initially and then i'll be placing this pattern on my fabric meanwhile the front is not cut on fold no it's not okay so um for the front i'll be adding half inch seam allowance round half inch here all the way down hemming allowance is one inch side seam allowance is one inch and of course the sleeve opening i'll be adding half inch and shoulder slant half inch now i've cut out uh, my front and back piece okay i'm so loving this fabric now i'll be joining the front and back together at the shoulder so this is my back pattern okay my back piece i beg your pardon well knowing the pattern okay and then i'll be joining front and back together at the shoulder right side facing right side meaning i will be sewing on the wrong side okay now um seam allowance for the shoulder would be half an inch so let me go ahead and do just that now that i've joined um both fronts and back together at the shoulder okay um here this is it okay now the next step is i'll be folding the back piece into two and i'll also be um, folding the front into two okay I'm trying to fold okay so after folding like this okay we're going to be measuring the length of um, the color we're going to be adding or should I call it band okay so this is folded okay that folded edge is my center back now I'm going to use my tape rule to measure from here all the way down okay including the seam allowance so you measure it down I think I have about um 39 inches there about for mine please yours might be different now after measuring you're going to be folding your band like this okay um the width of the band is about two inches i'll be using half inch to sew to the main top okay and um i had some pieces of fabric and i like to conserve fabric so i'll be doing some joinings here yeah i didn't want to waste my fabric so i'll be joining all this piece together now after measuring you know that 39 inches i measured was on fold so that'll be 39 in two places okay that is from one end of the center back to the other and the other end i hope that makes sense now from the center back here i'll place my tape and measure down to where i want my closure to start from okay i told her that this top has a closure but it's not button it's called a velcro i'll be showing us that later so that's like up to 14 inches okay i started measuring from my center back all the way down so i have about 14 inches okay that is where i went want my closure to start from now this is my band already ironed okay and i've already folded it into two now uh you have to fold the band into two equal halves okay and then you notch the center point we need to know the center point so um this folded part here will be attached to the center back and i also mark that 14 inch on my band the 14 inch i mark i measured on my fabric then i'll create a notch like this 
okay so the closure i want to add is going to start from that 14 inch after the 14 inch mark i beg your pardon now this closure is known as a velcro okay yeah it's called velcro so you can open it like so and close it back okay and the way we're going to be fixing it is going to be concealed on the band okay so um the length of the velcro we're using will be from that 14 inch mark all the way down I hope my explanation is clear. So that's why that knot part is very important. Okay. So um, I'll pick my Velcro and open it into two. So one side will be on one part of my band. And the other side or the other piece will be on the other side of the band. Okay. The Velcro comes in two. In two, um, two pieces. is a pair actually. So, um, on this side of my band, okay, I'll place the Velcro very close to the edge of my fold. Do not forget you have seam allowance on the other side. Okay. So, I'll open up the band. You don't want your seam, your seams to be showing on, um, the outer part of the band. Okay. So, I'll open up my band like this. Can you see? Then I'll place my Velcro. Then I'll go ahead and sew round, very close to the edge. Round all the way to the lower parts. Like I said, be mindful of the seam allowance. And make sure it doesn't also get too close to the edge of the band. Okay? So I'll go ahead and do that. Then the other part of the Velcro, the other part that sticks to this other side here, you'll be attaching it to the opposite side of the band still after the 14 inch mark i just hope this is not getting confusing yeah okay the velcro is starting from where we want the um kimono to have a closure okay so i'll also sew this all the way down to the end of my band okay so i hope this is going to make sense right now this is what i've done okay so by the time um you place both bands together Okay, this is my center back. We'll go ahead and fix it to the center back of the um, top. Okay, so I'm trying to look at my center back. This is my center back. I'll just like create a small clip, like a notch. Okay, then I'll open it up like so. Then, uh, you know, your band also has a like a notch okay or for me where i had the joining of the bands it serves as my center um back marking so i'm gonna place the band you want to call it color whatever you want to call it okay just look at the center back like this and then pin it together then i'll go ahead to my sewing machine okay and so so let me just pin this together so that it doesn't shift okay now you attach the band round the collar into the front neckline and all the way down to the end of the top at the hemline there okay so you attach it with half inch um seam allowance there same thing on the other side okay so here we are now you can see that um, our seam is not showing on the other side of the collar okay so this is how the closure is going to be you can see it's um invincible right now um we're gonna go ahead to the sleeve now for the sleeve you're gonna be attaching organza fabric now you measure the length of the sleeve opening and multiply that value by three so that's like 63 inches for me so you cut out the organza fabric okay the length is 63 inches and the width okay is um okay yeah so this is the um organza okay now you'll be folding the organza into two like this and the width shouldn't be more than um three okay so you take this to your sewing machine create pleats you have to pleat the organza back to this um the measurement of the sleeve opening okay and then sew it half an inch which is what i've done so this is it here okay and make sure 
you do that you know very neat and all of that now i'll be joining my side seams together okay so um right side facing right side i'll start joining my side seam from my sleeve okay from my sleeve here so i'll be joining one inch all the way down same thing on the other side one inch all the way down then when you're done with that you would also do a rolled end for the hemline you roll it with half an inch first then roll it one inch okay yeah so let me do that and show us the final outcome so here is the top you can see the closure is invincible it's not visible the top is so lovely okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial make sure you use bias tape to clean up the seam allowance okay between the organza and the fabric because organza has a way of making one feel very um, uncomfortable yeah so please do not forget to share this video with your friends thank you bye